The Korg NTS-1, as well as many other small synthesizers, require a 3.5mm MIDI jack rather than the standard 5-pin DIN. Today I'm going to show you how to make one. This is going to be one of those horrible talking hands videos about the Korg NTS-1. This tiny little synthesizer is really very capable and it's also extremely good uh, as an effects box because it has an audio input. You can run it through the DSP powered effects on board. Um, however, the MIDI port on it is a TRS. You can also do TR uh, MIDI over USB, but the Korg MIDI driver is such a disaster that if you already have more than 10 MIDI devices in your computer, you can't add this one because Korg only recognizes it if it's one of the first 10, which means you have to uninstall a whole bunch of other MIDI drivers and then install the Korg one, hope it stays in the right order, put it on, it's a, it, it basically it doesn't work, it's a nightmare. So we're relegated to using this MIDI in jack. Of course, this is a 3.5 inch MIDI jack. So you need a 3.5 inch TRS plug that plugs into your MIDI jack, but that's not really a MIDI standard. Well, it is now, but it never used to be. And because it wasn't a MIDI standard, it meant that manufacturers went it alone and just created their own standards. So there are actually two MIDI standards that go from this to a standard MIDI connector, a five pin MIDI connector. There's a type A, which the Korg uses and a, a number of other manufacturers. And there's a type B, which uh, Arturia, Novation, 1010 Music, and so on. They use a type B. So we are going to create a type A cable because they're relatively unavailable. I don't know why type A cables have vanished from the face of the earth. You can see them on Amazon uh, and they're normally priced, you know, about five or six dollars, but they're just not available. You can find them on, on some music sites, but like $15, $20, which is ridiculous for this cable. So what I did is I, well, first off, I have this MIDI cable, or this TRS cable. It's just a 3.5, 3.5. We're gonna hack this cable apart. And I also bought this package of MIDI DIN female connectors so that my MIDI plug can plug into this. So, first off, you have to make sure that the cable you're going to use is in fact a TRS cable. So you want to have three connectors on it. You want your tip, ring, and sleeve. If it has only two, it's not going to work. So the first thing we're going to do to our cable is cut it. So this cable is about six feet long. I don't need full six feet, so we'll, we'll cut maybe a little bit off this bit here and we can reuse that in, again in the future, this other piece that I'm not going to use today. So now we have to figure out which wire in here connects to which connector on here. So as you can see, this cable actually separates it into left and right on two separate conductors. A lot of these types of cables will have just a one shield with two conductors inside. The shield is the sleeve and the two conductors are the tip and ring. On this one, there's going to be a shield on each of these with a center conductor that is the tip and the ring. So we'll just pull these apart and we'll use a knife here just to take off a bit of the, uh, the insulation jacket. Just roll our utility knife. Okay, so now you can see the, the shielding, which is these bare strands of copper. We want to separate that away from the, the center conductors. And we can twist that together because we're going to solder to that later. And then we have the center conductors themselves. And usually you can just strip these with a, your fingernail because the insulation is so tiny. So now we have to figure out which wire connects to what. So obviously the sleeve is going to be our ground and the tip, which is the one at the end, is probably the red. Nope, it's the yellow. Okay, yellow, which means the sleeve, which is that center conductor, is going to be red. Red sleeve. Okay. Now here's my layout of the connectors that we need to do. So 
one red is sleeve so we'll just put in here so I don't forget yellow red and then braid that way I won't forget so if we look at our connections here we have on connector one which is the uh, they have it named one two three which is not correct really it's tip ring sleeve connecting to pins uh, on the MIDI connector so let's have it break out one of our MIDI connectors here most of these MIDI connectors have the numbers molded right into them but this one does not so that's fine we can orient it to our drawing here. We'll know that if we look here on the drawing, we can match it up with what we see in the connector. Pin one, four, two, five, and three. We're only interested in five, or sorry, four, two, and five. The outer ones, one and three, we're not gonna be using. So let's get rid of these. We'll actually get rid of this, this uh, grounding tab as well. We're not gonna use that. So we'll clip off this one, and we'll clip off this one. So now we have just three that we're going to use. All right, something else we're going to do is this bare wire. I don't really want to have bare wire hanging out and blowing in the breeze, so I'm going to use a little piece of heat shrink tubing on that and just create some artificial insulation. Heat shrink tubing you can get pretty much anywhere. You can get on the internet. I buy it in bulk from wholesalers, but you can buy, uh, you can even get a Harbor Freight. So we'll just create some insulation on that piece of wire. Heat it up with a heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, you can get away with a cigarette lighter or a little torch. Okay, so we're going to twist the ends. Now I'm going to cut up a couple small pieces of heat shrink here. The idea is once we've soldered this onto the tab, the heat shrink can then go around the tab and the wire and insulate it so it doesn't get shorted out. Uh, it's the same size as that one, so let's use maybe... Well, actually, we can probably do it about the same size as this, so we'll just cut another two like that, and that should be about fine. So. What we want to do is put that over the wire before we make the connection. So it's too late once you put it on afterwards. And we're also going to take some other heat shrink tubing and we're going to put it over the end because we're going to use that to cover up the, all the connections at the end. And actually we've got another piece here that we'll also use. And you're going to want to put these on before you solder because once you've connected it on it's too late. So we'll start with the red. As you recall, the red goes to pin four, which on our plug here, we're just gonna double check. We're putting red onto pin four, so we'll flip it over and we know it's going on to that one closest to us there. So what I'm gonna do is push that red through. Make sure the end isn't frayed because that's not gonna go through otherwise. So we'll push it through, bend it up. And I'm just going to turn this a little bit so I can hold it in the way that you can actually see. And then we'll take our soldering iron. By the way, soldering, you need to clean tip. I love these brass sponges. They're, they're great because you just cleans the tip off nice and shiny. Perfect for soldering. So then we'll just do a little, little dab of solder on here. And that one's done. We'll push that heat shrink tubing on there and give it a quick shot of heat. All right, the next one we got to do is the ground or sleeve, which is our bare conductor. So we're going to do the exact same thing again. And once again, we want to push a piece of heat shrink tubing on there beforehand. This is the tricky one because it's kind of in the middle. There we go. And 
we want to make sure it's not shorting out against the other one. And that the wires are nice and clean and not frayed. And a touch of solder. If you're wondering what the sound is, that's my hood fan, which I'm actually not using right now because if I do so, you won't be able to hear me talk. But normally that's that's venting away all my soldering fumes. So then I'll pull this piece of heat shrink down on top of that, that terminal, to insulate it. All right, so we didn't get the, the heat shrink all the way down onto this one simply because the end of it actually heat shrunk a little bit from the heat of the soldering iron. Unfortunate, but uh, it's not the end of the world it's because we're going to, we've got the first one insulated and this third one will also be insulated. And as long as we've got two out of three insulated, at least they're not going to short together. And that's good enough. So let's get that third one through that hole there. There we go. So let's put that in our mount there. Solder it up without getting the heat shrink tube going. Okay, nice solder joint, and we'll heat that heat shrink. All right, so we've got the three terminals hooked up. So now we'll take this other piece of heat shrink that we already put on the tube and slide that up over all three, like that. So now we have all of that insulated. So there's nothing, even that one that you can get the heat shrink all the way on, it's not exposed. So we'll heat that now. And lastly, we'll take the big piece of heat shrink and we'll put it up over everything onto the actual connector. And this will give us a little bit of rigidity. It's not the same as a, a strain relief, so if you yank on this cable, it's still gonna you know, rip those out. But as long as you aren't you know, taking this on the road, this is, this is for my studio. It's never gonna get moved or yanked, so it, it'll be fine. So we'll heat that one up now. Gotta be careful because that is hot. Wow, that's really hot. Okay, so there we have it. Now I can plug my MIDI cable or interface into this end here, plug this into my NTS-1 and have full MIDI capability on the Korg NTS-1 without resorting to the buggy Korg USB MIDI interface. I hope that's uh, of some help to you. If you think this is useful and you'd like to see more stuff like it on my synth channel, go ahead, click subscribe and click that little bell. Thanks for watching.